you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Welcome everybody to another beginner Splinterlands video. This time I'm going to address by far the most common question that I receive, and that is, which cards should I acquire first? So I've talked about a lot of things with starting Splinterlands. I've talked about how you should really look into renting cards to start with because that is a very cheap way to quickly build up a, a competitive deck. It's a, it's a way to try out cards before you decide if you want to buy them. And then once you do the start to start, decide to start buying cards, you should focus on buying individual cards to, to, uh, to kind of build up specific teams rather than buying packs where everything's random. But I've never talked about which cards you should actually get. And that's what I'm going to do here today. Let me get myself off the screen here. That way I don't have to look at myself and you guys can see the screen. Unfortunately, you do still have to listen to me. I know I'm sick, my voice sounds awful, but you're gonna have to deal with it. Sorry, not sorry. First, we're gonna look at summoners. And when we're looking at these, I'm going to kind of divide things into two different tiers. The first are cheaper versions that are great if you are if you're wanting to spend a little bit of money and you want to buy things directly instead of renting. I highly, highly encourage renting, but I know some people don't really like it, it's not for them. They'd rather build things up by owning their own cards, and that's okay. So these are kind of some cheaper options. Then I'm gonna talk about the more expensive options for people who want to rent, since it's very cheap. And you can, I mean, you can do both as well, obviously. But for people who want to rent, or for people who want to own their own cards but have more money and, are, and have maybe a few hundred dollars to throw at, throw at the game between, between the combined cards. So kind of a, to, to cover a different approach for, for everybody. So these are also all going to be level one cards. So these are going to be, again, we're talking about beginner level here. We're talking about starting in novice, going to bronze, maybe even going up to silver. These are, these are for low level players, these are for new players. So we're not gonna look at cards that are leveled up. These are all cards that function well at their level one abilities. So everything here is going to be level, level one. Keep, keep that in mind. So anyways, onto the cards, summoners. First two here, the first one here, one of the first cards that I actually bought, I think it may have been the first card I bought, is, is Mylar Crawling here. So, and, and I'm probably gonna butcher the names on half these cards, so, eh, I'm sorry. We've got Thorns. So, he's gonna give everybody Thorns, which is, is absolutely great. It's so dominant at the lower, lower levels, because Thorns will return two damage to any melee attacker. So if you have a melee attacker, they hit one of your characters with thorns, they're going to receive two damage back. That's great, I mean, that can be great everywhere, but it's even better in the lower levels because a higher percentage of characters are melee at the lower levels. You see more melee, you still you see some ranged, don't see really much magic at all, actually. Um, but range and magic, ma magic, excuse me, magic in particular, even range to, to a lesser extent are less common, so you see more melee attackers and that's going to work great because they're going to they're going to get this return two damage return to them. And remember, these are all lower level cards, so a lot of them aren't even doing two damage, so they're receiving more damage back than they're giving out, and it can just work great. So that's a great card to start with. Bright and Bloom is another card that I had for a while that works really well. It really shines on an Earthquake deck. Earthquake does two damage at the end of every round to every card that doesn't have flying because they're not on they're not on the earth; they're flying up in the air. Bright and Bloom gives everybody flying, and that way they will not take any damage from Earthquake, so it's a great card there. It can also just be a great card in, in general because flying also gives you a, an extra 25% dodge chance if the, if the attacking character doesn't have flying. So it can also just increase your dodge throughout the match, and, and that, can, that can, can really help. Or if the other team did have flying, adding flying to your team makes it so you don't get dodged as much. So it, it can benefit either way and can can really help things. So if you'd rather spend a little more though, and again, I'd highly recommend looking at the renting because it's not that much, we've got some of the some of the most common cards in the game here. Yoden Zaku is a, is a summoner that I pulled on one of my live streams. That was an awesome, awesome pull. Um, and then Scarred Llama Mage as well. Yoden gives blast. I'm gonna try to explain what all these abilities are because again, I'm expecting new players to be watching these videos. The, the icon on the right there is Blast, which is going to do half damage to the characters beside the character that gets hit. So it works really, it works well in general, but it works really well if you pair it with like Sneak, or not Sneak, sorry, Snipe. For example, Sneak also works well too, but Snipe will let you hit a character in the middle 
and then can damage on both sides. So it does 50% damage, so you're basically doing 200% damage total. And ramping up your damage and hitting multiple characters is just very, very powerful. Especially at lower levels where a lot of the characters have only one or two health anyways. You can take out three characters at once sometimes. It's great. Then Llama Mage has... So the plus two health and two abilities over here, which just work well. The one in the middle is Cleanse. The one in the beginning is Last Stand. What Last Stand does is whenever you have... Whenever that character is the la or that card is the last one remaining, it's going to increase their speed, health, armor, and attack by 50%. So what's really powerful is when you combine it with a character um, like Kron. You'll see Kron later. Kron can heal, has 10 health, 3 magic damage. So he ends up with he ends up with what 16 or 18? I think it's 18 health. Whenever he's in the last stand, he's just healing up a ton. You can't prevent that healing because Llama Mage has cleanse. And that combination, Llama Mage plus Kron, or even Llama Mage plus a level 3 Flesh Golem. Level 3 Flesh Golem gets healing as well. We're not going to talk about that card because you need it to be level 3. Um, but other, other than this. But those combinations can win you 80% of, of the matches you can use them in. In the, in the lower levels. I mean, you just th throw Llama Mage, Kron out there. It doesn't matter what else you have. E easy win. So that can carry carry you pretty far. So those are very, very just overpowered cards. Um, it's uh, overpowered and very powerful in general. Even later in the in the game, at the beginning, they just wipe through, wipe through teams. So on to the neutrals. Neutrals are a great investment because you can use them in almost every battle. There is a... There is a battle condition where you can't use neutrals, so you can't literally use them every time, but most of the time they can be used. doesn't matter what splinters are, are selected to, to, to be available. Furious Chicken on the left, zero mana, only zero mana card in the game. If you don't have enough mana, or you don't have enough yeah, mana to fill the slots, Furious Chicken is just a free card. A free card you can slide in there. You can put it in various places depending on where you want it to absorb some damage. It's only going to absorb one hit, but that one hit can be the difference in the battle. That one hit can be one extra hit that you get out of your tank, which means your attacker survive for, for maybe one extra hit, which could be one extra turn. You could get an extra hit in. It can be the difference between a win or a loss. It is such a good card that uh, I highly recommend that for, for everybody. It's a even in even in Champion League, it's a it's a staple of every deck because it's it's a free card. So Creeping Ooze only costs one mana, decreases the speed of everybody on the other team. Speed is so important in this game. Not only does it determine turn order, which is very important, but it also determines dodge chance. Your dodge chance, before accounting for any other sorts of abilities, like I mentioned flying, is the difference in speed times 10%. So, for example, Creeping Ooze has one speed. If he's, excuse me, if he was, okay, he can't attack. <laughs> Bad example. If you have a one speed card trying to attack a five speed card, there's a 40% chance to dodge again before factoring and flying um, or, or any other evasion, things like that. So decreasing the speed of the opponent by one is going to either increase your dodge chance by 10% or decrease their dodge chance by 10%, depending on which speed ends up being higher. So great card there, cheap. It is something that, again, when you've got one mana left over, you can just throw it in there, and, and it works really well. Goblin Mech is one of, the, one of the best early tanks in the game. We're going to see some more tanks, but this is a great neutral tank. works very well because it has high armor, a high combination of armor and health, so great, uh, great hit points. has four attacks, so it can do a lot of damage, and then has that piercing that makes its attack even better. What piercing does is allows you to damage, to continue... You may continue your damage on past armor and into health. And I know that it's not explained very well. Let me give you an example. This will make sense. Let's say that you are doing, you are attacking Goblin Mech with seven attack. Now you're not really going to see seven attack much in uh, at lower levels, but it may be an exaggerated example. Just hear me out here. Seven attack. You attack Goblin Mech here. You're going to do take out all five of the armor, and that's it. You don't continue on the damaging health unless you have the pierce ability. If you have pierce and you attack goblin mech with seven attack, you'll do, you'll erase that five armor, and then you'll continue to do two more damage to the, to the health. And that is, can be very valuable, so you're not wasting a lot of damage on armor. It can be really, really frustrating when you have a high attack card who is attacking, 
a one armor character and okay you have five attack against the one armor and you just wasted four of your attack points it can be really frustrating piercing helps uh, helps prevent that then we've got sandworm over here who i'm now re realizing doesn't have the stats i'm sorry he has five attack that's right five attack only one speed five health he has sneak which allows him to attack the card in the back instead of the card in the front you're not going to see a lot of strong cards in the back and the lower levels. So Sandworm can a lot of times just one shot through all the cards from the back and can really decimate a team. He is extremely powerful on the lower levels. Now, once you get up to the higher levels, that one speed ends up being a little bit of a problem and he's missing a lot of times. But even in the upper levels, when you have reverse speed, that one speed becomes very valuable and Sandworm can can really be played, be played again. So he does even have a place in some of the upper levels as well. Just not as dominant as in the lower levels. It's a very dominant card for pretty cheap. Uh, only 19 cents at the at the lower levels. So on to some of our bigger neutrals. And I want to I pause for just a second here and say that there are a lot of cards to choose from. There are a lot of valuable or useful cards to, to choose from. Making this list was hard and narrowing down these were hard. If you're, if you're more of a veteran player or you've been through this or maybe you're just a new player and, and got started and you're having some success with different cards or not having success with some of these cards, let me know in the comments. I would love for people to also go read through the comments and, and see other people's opinions and, oh yeah, I agree with this, I disagree with this, and maybe kind of get some other cards or get some other ideas. So certainly use the comment section once this starts to, to fill up as well so that, uh, that you can see other people's opinions on, on things or let me know what you, what you think I missed. But anyways, the ones that I chose, there's a bunch of good ones. The top four that I, I feel like either really, I really dominated with or I had problems beating were our first Cornelius, Cornelius over here on the left. One of the rare cards that has healing at level one. Healing is super powerful. We're gonna talk about that a lot. Healing is very powerful at the lower levels because there's not a great way to prevent it. 12 health means that he gets a lot of healing back each turn. He can, he can win battles by himself through fatigue a lot of times. Even if he can't attack the first spot, there's a, there's a lot of times just not a lot of damage in the lower tiers at the lower leagues. And they can't do more damage to Cornelius than he's receiving. After you get to turn 20, you go into fatigue where each character is damaged um, an increasing amount as the, as the round goes on. And then that fatigue is going to take out the other characters before it takes out, uh, takes out our little eyeball here because he's got such high health. So it's going to take them all out first. So then we've got a tank here that has no attack, but is so hard to get through because he has shield and void shield, re uh, reduces the amount of melee and range damage coming in void reduces the amount of magic damage coming in sorry i gotta take a breath there so even though he's only got six health he's mitigating so much damage that it's hard to get through him it is really hard to get through him and then he becomes even more valuable at higher levels when he gets things like reflect and can send damage back when he's got thorn reflect and thorn so he's sending sending all sorts of damage back at you he is such a pain and yeah he's kind of an expensive card but again renting is very cheap it's only one cent a day that's a card that really gave me trouble Halfling Alchemist. This is one of my favorite cards. I feel like this might be the most underrated card in the game. At only 484, despite there being a pretty low, um, some pretty low circulation of him, is an absolute steal in my opinion. He is great because I don't even know if that's a he or a she. Anyways, the Alchemist is great because it's only two mana, so you can play, play it in most battles, and then the, this ability here is so good it cuts. The opponent's damage in half you have to hit that it's only the character that you hit you hit that character their damage is cut in half it is a great counter to okay something something like the kraken which you'll see in a little bit kraken's a card that a lot of a lot of new players can can play and can win the battle all by itself it has such a high attack and such high health that character or that there's just not enough not enough damage with some of the lower level cards to get through it you cut that damage in half, takes twice as long to get through your team, gives you more time to get through the, through the Kraken. But it, it's great. I use it anytime. I think there's going to be a high damage tank out there. Now, obviously, it doesn't work well against something like uh, Lord Arianthus or however you say his name over here to the left. But when you've got a, when you have a high damage tank or when you have like a, some sort of snipe or something on for everybody, it can it can work very well. And, and reducing that damage is so valuable for all, for only two mana.
And then we've got Chain Golem over here. Chain Golem is a great tank. He's kind of like it's kind of like the Living Lava that you get as a starter card for Fire. And one of the reasons that's Fire is the most common common splinters early early in the game. One of the most common splinters in the game, period. But early on, it's because of because of the, the lava there taking all that reduced damage. Chain Golem does the same. Takes reduced damage from from melee and ranged attacks. Has three melee attack itself. So great tank can take a lot of damage. Can dish out some himself, and he's neutral, so you can use it with all the other all the other splinters. Remember, there's a much higher percentage of melee cards early in the game than than as you progress. So that shield ability is is great all the time but it's even better early in the game works very very well okay on to some more tanks so i didn't divide these up into, into separate sections because there just wasn't i didn't feel like there was a lot that i really felt i needed to put in here on the right is the cheap one that's sea monster again a character that can heal itself i already talked about how that valuable that is now he's got four melee attack as well so it works works very well the other three have a taunt ability which can be very, very powerful. That forces any character that can to attack those cards. So it basically neutralizes snipe, opportunity, sneak, those types of things. Those, those cards will have to attack the taunting character uh, instead. So they've got high health. They've also got high damage. So I talked about how, again, in newer leagues, you can just stick the Kraken out there and that's going to win you a lot of battles. People really struggle to get through the Kraken. Again, that's one of the most... That's, a, that's another very common question that I get. How do I beat the Kraken? And if, if a lot of people are asking me that, that tells me that that needs to be a card that I, that I should recommend to you guys because so many players struggle against it. Because there's, there's a lot. There's a combined 17 hit points that you need to get through and it has four attack. So if you just stick that card out there, that's going to, to win quite a bit. Or you'll see things like the Kraken plus the Healer that can also give people people a lot of trouble. So those uh, those taunting characters can, can work pretty pretty well. Dark um, Dark Haan isn't. I don't recommend quite as much because it's only got the two attack, so it's harder to to take out an entire team at a, a lower level. And Death is really a hard faction to play for for new, for new players. So a lot of people aren't using Death as much anyways. So I really recommend Magnor and the Kraken um, first first there if you're if you're looking at those. So. All right, on to healers. I talked about healers. There are two characters that you can get that have a tank heal at level one. I say tank, it's going to heal the character in the first spot. Wood Nymph for life. Uh, I think one reason she's a little bit cheaper is there actually is a, I say life, earth. Earth. There is a better earth healer later on, but you have to level her up to get that heal. Wood Nymph is the only one that's available at level one. There's also a life healer that, uh, that you actually get as for one of the starter cards, so you do start with a healer. For water, you've got Crustacean King, can heal a tank. Armor Smith is a little different. It's got repair. That's going to heal, um, heal the armor. So it's going to restore that armor, which can be very valuable. That can be another actually. That can actually be another way to counter a single Kraken. If somebody's just throwing a Kraken out there, a lot of times, even if it's not high mana, they just put the Kraken out there and let the Kraken go to work. Put any card that's got armor, and add this repair ability. And then every time the Kraken hits it, it's just going to be taking away that armor. Take away the armor, armor smith they puts it back on. Take away the armor, armor smith puts it back on. It's an, they, the, the Kraken, a single card, um, a single card that's not like magic or piercing or something like that, can't, can't get through it. So that can be very valuable at, at lower levels and it's still one I use in the, in the mid game today. So very solid card. All right, on to the attackers. I struggled making this entire list. Attackers was by far the hardest because there's so many different options. My the one I've used the most and I'm still using now is Soulstorm. Soulstorm's the third one there. Three range damage for only five mana. That's a very efficient use of mana. That's a high attack card that doesn't cost a lot. Doesn't have a lot of health, but is very fast and has flying. So it can dodge a lot. So even though there's not a lot of health, sometimes it can actually survive for, for a little bit. So then you've got a four attack card over there. And in Headhunter, that's not too expensive. Again, fast so we can get its attacks off. Got a decent amount of amount of health, so a solid card. That ability there um, actually prevents, uh, re removes flying. So it's guaranteed to hit flying characters and will remove that ability so it can get rid of that flying. That can be very helpful. Pyromancer, I know I'm jumping out of order. Oh, well. Pyromancer with the Blast. I recommend if you don't get Yoden. Now, if you get Yoden 
and you're mostly using him. Now, sometimes you can't, but if you're mostly using him, he's already giving everybody blast. So using Pyromancer, it's kind of like you're paying for the blast, but then you don't actually need it, so it's not as advantageous. But if you don't have Yoden, that blast ability is so good. So having an attacker with that blast is, is very nice. And then Fire Spitter was a card that I've actually, I don't think I've ever owned, but gave me a lot of problems early in the game. Just kind of a solid, just solid stats there. The four speed, four health with, with two damage is much better than what you see with a lot of the beginning attackers. It's only four mana, so you can fit it into to a lot of battles. Works works very well, can dodge, a, can, can dodge a lot. So it was just kind of a pain for me. I included that. Honestly, almost all the dragon cards are really good. It's uh, it's hard to go wrong with any of the dragon cards. They, they're they're pre a pretty nice one, or I like almost all of them. But that one was, was one of my favorites. Not my absolute favorite, though. That one's on the next screen. It's over on the right. That's Dragon Jumper. It's got Opportunity. Opportunity will automatically attack the lowest health character. So fairly fast. It's got the flying. Three melee damage to the lowest health character is very nice. I really like that card. Kron the Undying. I kind of talked about him. He's on the left. He's got that three magic attack, the, the ten health, and then that healing that's at level one is very powerful. Even without the Llama, you had the Llama and the Last Stand onto him, and the Cleanse as well so that it can't prevent the healing, and... That combo can just run through most of your matches for, for quite a while. I see people even even in Diamond. Um, I haven't really paid too much attention to Champion level, but even in Diamond, I see that being used. It's much not not near as effective. There's so many extra ways to counter, and people have so many other better cards um, or good cards that that can that can do enough damage to get through that healing. That it's it's definitely not as effective up there, but it's still a, a strategy that's that's used up there sometimes. Is just stick. Stick Kron and the Llama in there and let them go to work. So then we've got two water cards in here. Two of my favorite cards. Ruor of the Seas has some decent magic damage. Again, you don't see a lot of magic, uh, a lot of magic damage early in the game, but it's also got that blast. So kind of, uh, kind of like the card we saw on the, the previous screen, blast is, is so valuable. Having it with magic is great because even the blast hits under the armor. Magic hits under armor. The, the blast to the cards on the side will also do damage under armor so so it works very well i am not trying to promote the apparel company <laughs> apparel company here phantom of the abyss is a card that i absolutely love i'm not saying it's the best card in the game but it is my favorite card in the game i love it because i love dodging everything so i've got it listed under attackers because he's got three magic attack which is, is very solid he works as a tank too because okay remember that uh, evasion is calculated by the difference in speed times 10%. So if you have a one speed character trying to attack, now remember it's only melee and ranged, magic attacks can't be evaded unless there's an ability that you have, that, but you won't come across that for a while, so don't worry about that. Only, only ranged and melee attacks can be evaded. So if you have a one speed melee character trying to attack Phantom of the Abyss, you have a 50% dodge chance just from the speed differential. You have flying, so you have a there's an extra 25% chance to dodge unless you're unless the attacker is also flying. Then you have the evade there, which is another 25% chance to evade. So a one speed melee or range attacker that is not flying cannot hit Phantom of the Abyss. Cannot. We've got a hundred percent dodge chance. So it's awesome to set that character up so that it just gets to dodge over and over and over again. I will, at lower levels, like I said, you don't have a lot of magic anyway, so you can just throw it in as a tank, and it can work pretty well. It also really works well if you don't have magic, if magic is restricted for the battle, so obviously you can't use magic. I also really like it when you have, you have it where all melee characters have sneak. So I'll put Phantom of the Abyss in the back, so all the melee characters, other than the one in front, but all the melee characters in the back are attacking Phantom of the Abyss and are usually not hitting. So there's such a high high dodge chance. He's dodging over and over and over again, and I just love it. I just love seeing that uh, seeing that work. It's got to be infuriating on the other side. It's got to be some people's least favorite cards if they if they keep running into that. But that's a card that I absolutely love and have a ton of fun with. So I, I highly recommend that one again. It's only it's only nine dollars, so it's not too bad. 0.1 cents a day if you're trying to to rent, and. Yeah, that dragon that dragon jumper card was extremely cheap. I can't imagine that price is going to same. By the way, these prices are, are as of the post date. They're going to change a lot. I'm gonna I can imagine there's going to be people leaving comments 
on uh, on this video later on that uh, say, oh, you said this price, you said this card was $10 and now a month later we're at $30 or something like that. I'm not promising the price is gonna jump like that, but so far prices have been, prices go up. <laughs> Numbers go up consistently. Um, so I hope that continues, but you never know. You never know when we're, when we're gonna hit a decline or something like that, that can happen. It's always a risk. But the great thing about this game is that there's always going to be some value in there. It's not like some of the, it's not like the more traditional mobile games where you're just your money's going into a black hole and you get the enjoyment that you get out of that character and that's it. When you're done, that money's gone. Here you can always resell things. Even if they go down and down in value, they still have value. You can resell them. So that is great. And that's why if you've got the money, if you're willing to spend the money, I highly recommend just buying the cards because there's a good chance your your value is going going to go up and you don't have to spend money renting and, and again throwing it into to a black hole but if you are renting at least it's very cheap here so it's a great great option and again i highly recommend renting so let me know what you guys think if you agree with my recommendations disagree if there's things that you don't think i should put in there or some extra cards you think i should have added on i tried to keep it i tried to keep it narrowed down it feels like almost any card can be useful given the right level given the right situation but there are clearly some that dominate uh, dominate particularly lower levels more more than others and I wanted to restrict as much as possible so I wasn't just including 30% of the cards out there or anything like that I wanted to kind of narrow it down for you guys so hopefully this was great there's going to be a lot more videos coming I want to I want to talk about I want to do a video looking at how much you can earn in this game looking at kind of break like a weekly probably a, maybe every other week video kind of breaking down my own investments because I'm I'm enjoying playing this game, but I'm also doing a lot of investing in this game and I can show you guys what I'm doing. I don't know. I might be the worst investor in the world, but right now, since all the prices are going up, we're all making money. So it's been, it's been great. We'll see, uh, when things, when things slow down, uh, hopefully not for a while, but when things slow down, maybe, uh, how good of an investor I actually am. But I would like to kind of give you guys details on that. I would like to go through each splinter and kind of talk about a beginner deck for each, um, each uh, each splinter and go go beyond just cards to recommend, but also some some early game strategy. There's so much I want to do, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for that. Of course, like the video. Any help you guys, any any support you guys can give me, I appreciate. This community has been so awesome and so supportive. It's been absolutely wonderful, and you guys are so amazing. So thank you very much. Until next time.